Welcome back to the final part of our Not a Bloodthirster painting vlog, and let's finish up this sucker. On to the wings, which I have left separate from the rest of the model this entire time, uh, mainly because it would have been too awkward trying to uh, paint it with the wings on. Normally don't like to do that. I like to put everything together so we don't have to worry about filling gaps over paint, but in this case it was necessary. We are going to be using the paint stain and wash method, starting off with a canvas coat of Vallejo model color brown rose. To that we add a heavy stain of game color scarlet red. Remember a paint stain is basically just like a very heavy wash. Uh, normally with the wash you don't want it to tint the base coat or what I call the canvas coat here, but with the stain you do. Once that is dry, we apply our second stain. This is closer to an actual wash, our uh, game color hexed lichen. So this is a little bit lighter. It's not gonna cover up all the red, and this one is gonna go more just into the recesses. And note, I'm not being super careful with the application here. This is basically just kind of blocking in the colors, all the cleanup work we're gonna be doing via the highlights. And then finally, one more wash with hex lichen with black added. Uh, this is mainly just a recess wash, uh, mainly concentrated in that uh, central area of the wings. So this is going to tell us the pattern of the colors we're going to use. We're going to start with a dark tone towards the center and then work out the colors uh, lighter as we get towards the tip of the wing membranes. So first highlight stage is sort of a clean up stage uh, using a mix of the colors we already used with some pale flesh added to lighten it. And you can see we are going with the texture that's already on the wing. So the paint's a little bit thicker than normal. Uh, I am using broad brush strokes here. Uh, the pattern is going to be, we're going to start with very broad brush strokes and then as we uh, move on to the additional highlights, we'll use uh, a bit of a, a finer brush or a, a lighter touch with the brush to uh, shrink down our line. So big broad stroke to begin with and then a finer stroke and then a finer stroke on top of that. One thing to keep in mind if you are painting parts separately as I'm doing here, make sure you're painting them uh, with the right orientation. These wings are going to be very uh, upright. So notice I'm putting the highlights on the top part of the wings. If you ever do uh, paint models that are in separate pieces, make sure you are highlighting all of them so they orientate correctly once you put everything together. And then the final step, just to get a little bit more color into the wings, uh, a very light wash, once again hexed lichen, just putting that into the recesses uh, along the edges so we have a nice meaty pink color going into purple. I did call these the meat wings because that's the look I'm going for here. I want a very fleshy texture. Now for the inside of the wings, uh, I'm not going to narrate everything because it's basically the same thing we just did, however, uh, with different colors. Uh, there's two variations here. First of all, starting off with uh, heavy warm gray as our canvas coat before putting on the scarlet red and the hex lichen. Now 
The other thing I want to note is that the highlights are going to involve using game color heavy orange. Now this is a new color I recently picked up and I don't know if this is what the color is supposed to look like or if I got a bad bottle, but this is definitely not orange. This is a flush color. So in case you're following verbatim, don't use heavy orange unless your heavy orange is not orange. That makes sense. And also we're going to be going much more fleshy on this side. And then finally at the end, just like with the other side, uh, adding some of our uh, hex lichen around the edges on the uh, outside of the wings on the inside, kind of doing the same thing with the violet red, uh, going for a bit more of a red tone rather than the purple. And also because of the shape of the wings here, this is more done in a line, so we get more of a serrated edge uh, between the membranes. And. Uh, those are our meaty wings so far. Still got a little work to do on them, but they are good enough to finally attach to our demon. Cyanoacrylate glue, standard uh, super glue, good enough for our wings. We don't need to pin them on because this is resin. Just scrape off as much primer as you can and attach them. And then we have to fill the gaps. This is the hard part. There are many different types of putties we can use to fill the gaps. Uh, the problem is a lot of them need sanding or smoothing or grinding down, what have you, which I don't want to do on a painted surface. So instead, I'm using 3D printer resin. This is the same stuff used in resin printing machines, and I have it in a, a small bottle with a needle dropper, and I'm just running a very thin line uh, around the gaps. The reason I'm going with this is because uh, due to its viscosity, it smooths out very nicely. I don't have to worry about trying to trim it down or uh, sand it to get it uh, in place. The trick here is to put on a very thin coat and then I have a, a UV flashlight and just cook it for about 30 seconds, cure it for about 30 seconds, and then move on from there. The main thing to remember here is put on a very thin coat. If it's not enough to fill the gap, you still want to go through the curing process and then put more on afterwards. If you put on too much, uh, it won't cure inside, then it, you'll have that liquid trapped inside your model and one day it's going to leak out. And then once all the gaps were filled, I gave the entire model uh, a, a UV a cure for about 10 minutes to make sure that everything was solid. Now with the wings on, we can finally get back to the skin. If you remember back, way back in part one, didn't quite like how the skin came out. So now we're gonna, we're gonna fix it. First thing to do is cover up the purple parts and also lighten up some areas using a mix of beige red and burnt red. So the previous skin we have, kind of treating that as just a, uh, a base coat, it has enough shade, uh, it just needs some more highlighting to make it very punchy. Uh, continuing on with this, adding more beige and eventually pale flesh to our recipe, uh, concentrating on the chest, uh, the biceps, the face, and the feet.
for the other areas of the skin, we are going to go for a brighter red color by uh, highlighting with deep orange and vermilion mixed. When initially painting the skin, I wanted to avoid going to orange because I was planning on painting the armor bright red, but now that we have a blue on the armor, we freed up this different tone of red to use on the rest of the skin. From here we are going to add some scrofulous brown for our highlights and then finally use straight light orange which is a, a very transparent color so we can use it straight out of the bottle by itself. And you can see why I left the wings off for so long because with the wings on uh, it's model is very hard to handle and especially to keep in front of the camera. The model does have several areas where there's little skin eruptures, like little thorns or uh, spikes coming through. Uh, adding a little bit of color there with a wash of royal purple and gory red. And then later all those little horny bits will get painted similar to the way we're going to paint the wing spikes later on. As we approach the end of the model, this also becomes kind of the clean up stage. There's a lot of small little things here I, I, I don't show you just because it will be an extra hour of footage, but uh, clean up stages, tweaking some things, fixing some things that got damaged from the handling, a little bit of color here and there, found a brush stroke, gotta go back repaint that. All that stuff takes a whole lot of time, uh, but it is in there, it is part of the process, so I wanted to mention it. into the home stretch have a whole bunch of spikes to paint and I hate painting spikes. Going with washes to save a little bit of time, base coat of green ochre and then I'm using thin uh, layers essentially of beastie brown slowly building these up about three layers so the color continues to get darker and darker. Uh, notice I'm taking the brush strokes from the base and working them out so I get a nice serrated edge. I don't have to worry about a line. And then after that, doing about two coats of charred brown, which uh, it's not on camera at all. <laughs> I did a real bad job of this. Uh, but building that color up, that dark color up towards the uh, edge, and then also running a wash around the base of all those spikes as well. So annoying painting spikes. And then last thing to do is uh, go back to the wings and uh, make them a little bit more punchy. We have some brighter oranges happening on the model now, bright colors. Wings were looking a little bit uh, flat. So mixing up red ink and violet ink for a red-violet mix and just putting on a, a light wash over the wings. This is partially a glaze, however I'm applying it rather heavily so we get a little bit more color in the recesses uh, just to like I say, make them look a little more comfortable uh, or make them look a little bit more colorful, excuse me. And we're using inks for this so we don't cover up the all that work we did in the wings. The inks is going to let more of that color through and just tint them rather than uh, covering everything up. And with that, we are finally finished with our King of Onslaught. Thank goodness. This was admittedly a very fatiguing model to paint. Highly detailed, uh, took uh, dozens of hours, especially since I got interrupted with family issues. Uh, getting back to it uh, was really hard. Uh, there's a lot of things that still could be fixed or done better. Uh, I'm not going to point them out. <laughs> Hopefully you can't see them. But uh, at least it's done and I'm mostly pretty happy with it. We have a nice punchy reddish orange skin uh, with the variation of more beige color in the face and the chest. That gives us a bit of variety uh, moving up to the, uh, the meat wings. I think I could have gone a little bit lighter color with those in the end. Uh, 
yeah, they could have been tweaked a bit, just increased the amount of contrast. So that's one area I can go back and uh, I should have gone back and fixed, but yeah, I spent too much time with this already. Uh, I do like the blue armor. It's very punchy against against the red. I think it could use a little bit more of a violet or a purple color in the recesses just to tie that violet purple color that's throughout the model into the armor as well. And then for the axe, going for something a bit more bright red, demonic hellfire looking. Uh, I think that would bring the uh, the red color from the body down into the base a bit more. Uh, my way of doing it, I think it works, but yeah, having a bright red axe probably would be more appealing to most people, but it wasn't fitting into the theme that I had in my head. Still, not bad. So that is it for this one. It's in the can. I think I'm going to go paint something that's actually miniature to take a break from painting enormous things like this. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. As always, experiment, practice, and enjoy your painting. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So what are we, about a half hour into this movie? No, I'm afraid not. It's more like a minute. No.